Number 54. A ball is thrown straight up. It passes a 2 meter high window, 7.5 meters off the ground, on its path up, and takes 0.312 seconds to go past the window. What was the ball's initial velocity? All right, so it gives us some hints, but let's try to work without them. So let's just draw a picture, okay? So there's a ball. Let's draw the ball here. And it is thrown straight up. Right, so it's traveling up. What we want to find, right, it's, it wants us to find the velocity initially that was imparted onto it. Okay? And it says that it's thrown up, and it passes a window, right? So let's draw the window. So here's the window. And now it says the window is 7.5 meters off the ground. So it didn't say, part of the ambiguity is, it didn't say what point of the window. Does, is the bottom part of the window 7.5 meters above? Is the top? Is the middle? So I have to assume that the bottom is. All right, not that I have to, but I'm just I'm going to choose that that's the uh, that's the point that in uh, in which they're talking. So 7.5 meters to the bottom of the window. Okay, great. And now it says that uh, the, it passes a two meter high window. So we also know the height of the window here, right? We know that this from here on down is two meters. Okay. So given the diagram that I drew. Right, if we just think about then the total distance from the ground, let me change the color, the total distance from the ground on up to the highest point here, right, what should that be? It would be the 7.5 plus two, right? Maybe it'll come in handy, I don't know, but I'm just looking at things I can put together already. So this would be 9.5 meters, okay? And now it says that it takes 0 0.312 seconds to go past the window. All right, so meaning that by the time the ball reaches the window here, right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass through the window. And the time it takes to pass through this window here is going to be 0 0.312 seconds. All right, so let me, just, let me just get rid of some of these dots here. Okay, so from this point to this point, it takes the ball, I'm going to write the time in here, 0 0.312, right? 0 0.312 seconds. Okay, so now if you notice, I'm already kind of framing the problem here, right? Um, maybe these points will be important. Maybe in terms of uh, this particular frame here, maybe this will be considered my initial velocity. Not to be confused with this initial velocity. They're, they're at two different points. So I can call them both initial velocities because they're relative terms. Initial to what, right? So this initial velocity is the initial point when I'm describing from this location to that location, all right? So let's call this, and let's say that that has an initial velocity, and then the point up here would have a final velocity. And these would equal some numbers, but we don't know what they are yet. What we do know is we do know, I mean, focus in here, we do know the time, right, that it took for the ball to pass through the window, and we also know the height of the window. So let's write some knowns and unknowns, okay? So let's talk about like from the window's perspective, okay? So from the window. From the window's perspective, the initial velocity here was, I don't know, something. The final velocity was gonna be something. By the way, do you think the final should be less than the initial? Yeah, it should be, right? Uh, because the final, uh, the final point is higher. So remember the ball's in free fall. That's gonna be important for this Variable coming up, what's the acceleration on the ball? Free fall, so it's negative 9.80 meters per second squared. We also do know the time that it's gonna to take to travel th past the window, right? So there's 0 0.312 seconds. And we also know the displacement of the window, which is gonna be two meters. Okay, so notice how all of these variables must correlate with two points, okay? The initial point, the final point, the time it takes to go from the initial to the final, and the displacement from the initial to the final, as well as any accelerations that are experienced by that object during that time, okay? All right, so always think about that consistency, okay? That's, that's actually the key. So um, why don't we, so 
it might be hard to connect. Well, how the heck do I get it down to the, my answer? Don't worry about it for right now. Just start solving some stuff. All right, we can solve whatever we want here. So it doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll just solve for the initial component of it if I can. Well, can I? Well, let's see what we're given. We're given the acceleration. We're given the time. We're given the displacement. Do we have an equation that relates all four of them? Yes, we do. Equation number two. So let's, let's do it. So we have the displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time, right, plus one half of the acceleration times time squared. So the displacement here is two meters, right? Um, specifically, they told me it was 2.00, so just considering sig figs here. Now it's positive because the object is moving upwards. The initial velocity is what I'm looking for in, with respect to the window. The time value then was given, right? It was 0 0.312. Then it's plus 1 half times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.80, times the time squared, so 0 0.312 squared. Okay, so now let's clean it up a little bit. This is then equal to 0 0.312 vi, and this whole term will be negative now. So let's take out the calculator, 0 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 0 0.312 squared. Okay, so this works out to be negative uh, 0 0.477, three significant figures. So now let's add this on over, right, because we've got to isolate the variable. So this is just math from here on out. Well, it was math from before too, but whatever. So this becomes 2.48. Eight now, considering significant figures, I have to cut the answer right here. Okay, is equal to 0 0.312 vi. Oh, vi. And now just divide out the 0 0.312. 0 0.312. Come on, there we go. Okay, so the initial velocity now is going to be 2.48 divided by 0 0.312. So we get a value of 7.95. I have to round to three sig figs, meters per second. Okay, great. Now that don't don't that's not the final answer. That's an initial velocity, but that's not the initial velocity uh, that they want us to find. Okay, that's the initial velocity. Go back to the picture. That's the initial velocity at this point. Okay. Now instead of saying initial velocity because it's just um, what do you call it? It's just relative. It's initial to something. Just pretend that now we're going to just write the um, velocity. Okay, so I'm not going to, oop, let me just erase. So I'm going to erase this initial term. Okay, and I'm now just going to write that the velocity here is equal to uh, 7.95 meters per second. Okay, so now let's think about if we can maybe try to piece together an answer. So let's now look at the problem Again, I'm just going to redraw a, a quick picture. So we have this window here. Okay, we have the ball down here. We know it's going to be traveling upwards to the bottom of the window. And we know once the ball reaches this point, its velocity here is going to be, as we just calculated, 7.95 meters per second. We know that the ball had some imparted velocity to it, the initial velocity, which we don't know what it is. We do know also the height that the ball traveled to get to the bottom of the window. That was 7.5 uh, zero meters. And we also know something else, right? We also know the, dis uh, excuse me, we also know the acceleration, right? Because the, the ball here is in free fall, so it's a negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Now, what can I call this velocity if, if I'm considering my frame to be starting here and ending here? It would be the final velocity, right? So, and I also, I'll mark this as my displacement. Okay, they're all positive except for the acceleration because the ball is traveling up. So now, what are we thinking? Well, we're thinking, do we know a relationship between these four variables I just wrote? X, VF, A, and VI. Do we? Take a look at the formulas. It looks like we do, right? Equation number, and let me just change the color here, equation number four. Right? So let's write it. Final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times x. So the final velocity is 7.95, that value is squared. The initial velocity is what I'm trying to find. The acceleration is negative 9.80, 
and now my displacement was 7.50. Hooray! Now let's just not mess up the calculation, because if I can calculate this, I can get my answer. So this should be 63, so when you square the 7.95, it becomes 60, oops, 63. Point two, two, uh, three significant figures equals the initial velocity squared plus now. So 2 times negative 9.8 times 7.5. So we get negative. And what I'll do is I'll just actually make this a negative sign. Negative 147. So now add, and that has to be three sig figs. So add the 147 to both sides. 47. So we now have that the initial velocity squared is equal to, so 147 plus 63.2, so 210. Okay, so we get a value of 210. And now, I can put the decimal there. Now just take the square root. So remember, when you do this, you have both the positive and negative answer. So second square root of 210 works out to be 14.5 considering significant figures. And that's meters per second. Now, which value are we going to take, positive or negative? Well, what's the direction of motion here? The ball is traveling up, so we take the positive version. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just erase this, and now what I'll, I, I can put in the positive sign if I like, or I can leave it out. It doesn't really matter. But now this is the initial velocity. Okay. Initial velocity of what? Well, the initial velocity, look back at the picture on the bottom left, initial velocity of the ball. Okay, and this is the final answer now. And it should make sense that sh initial velocity should be greater than the velocity in which it's traveling at the window. So, sounds like it's reasonable. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope it helped. And uh, please remember to subscribe. Thank you.